Hi, this is Corey Rogers, Vice President of Marketing for National Equipment Dealers, NED. Today we're in a Hyundai A-Series wheel loader, specifically this is an HL940A model. Uh, many of the Hyundai loaders have common features among them, and we're going to do a brief walk around of the machine. We're going to talk about some important maintenance features of the machine, and then we'll speak about how to operate a Hyundai A-Series wheel loader. Hyundai's A-Series line of wheel loaders are designed to be tough and reliable. And all Hyundai loaders are backed by a three-year or 3,000-hour full machine warranty, plus a five-year or 10,000-hour structural guarantee, and a limited lifetime warranty on the articulation joint. All Hyundai A-Series wheel loaders are powered by Cummins turbo diesel engines that are stage five and tier four final compliant, with easy to maintain after treatment systems that feature passive regeneration. Hyundai loaders are equipped with standard rear view cameras. Optional four camera surround view systems and backup radar are also available. Hyundai's loader buckets are designed with curved side plates and enhanced spill guards for improved heat capacity and material retention. ZF four speed automatic transmissions are standard equipped Front and rear ZF axles feature outboard wet disc brakes and planetaries that improve weight distribution and brake serviceability. A hydraulic auto locking front differential is also standard, which provides additional tractive effort on slippery surfaces. Daily maintenance on these loaders is easy with centralized lube banks for hard to reach grease points. Batteries are easily accessible and located at the back right and left of the machine in lockable compartments. A tilt back hood, swing out fenders, and lockable cooler doors allow for easy access to serviceable components. Convenient service steps with aggressive tread and grab rails improve safety. The fuel inlet, which is equipped with a lockable fuel cap, can be found inside the cooler compartment. The firewall separating the engine and coolers is equipped with left and right side fire extinguisher inlets for emergencies. Hyundai's cabs are large and packed with operator conveniences, including a fully adjustable air suspension seat, a tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and other creature comforts. Hyundai offers an optional ISO style hydraulic quick coupler for easily changing between attachments like buckets and forks. Before you start your workday, make sure to review the maintenance chart located near the articulation joint on the front frame. There, you will find recommended lube and maintenance information and a diagram of important servicing points. Take the time to inspect inside and underneath the front and rear frame of the machine and remove any debris that might interfere with the loader's performance. Check all of your fluids with the site level gauges that are provided for transmission oil, hydraulic oil, depth fluid, and coolant. Also make sure the diesel fuel tank is filled and fill any other fluids that are low prior to using the machine. Open the rear door and inspect all of the coolers for debris. To access the radiator, transmission oil cooler, and charged air cooler, unlock and swing out the cooler mount that holds the hydraulic oil cooler and AC condenser. Make sure to clean the coolers with compressed air if needed. Never use water to clean the coolers. To gain full access to the engine compartment, a convenient switch is located below the operator's cab that is used to raise the engine hood. Make sure all compartment doors and coolers are closed and locked prior to opening this hood. Once the hood is open, unlock and swing out the rear fender. Then you can release the lower engine cover by depressing the release lever inside the cooler compartment. Make sure to check your engine oil level daily. There is no need to raise the engine hood to do this. Simply open the cooler door located on the right side of the machine. Press the release lever, swing out the fender, and remove the carabiner from the lower panel. Now you can conveniently access the engine oil dipstick. On the right side of the machine, you will find a compartment just outside of the cab. Both your inner and outer cab air filters are located in this compartment. Check them to make sure they are clean and don't require service. Remove and change if necessary. Hyundai's A-Series loaders are designed to pull fresh air into the cab from a snorkel-mounted inlet that is located near the top of the cab. 
Make sure to grease your machine daily prior to starting your workday. Refer to the maintenance chart located on the left-hand side of the machine near the articulation joint. Make sure to grease both centralized lubrication banks, both the top and lower bearings at the articulation joint, and all the grease points located throughout the loader linkage, quick coupler, and bucket linkage areas. So we're here in the cab of the Hyundai wheel loader. This is the HL940A, and I want to talk about the component location, some of the features and benefits from within the cab. If you look at the right-hand side, you've got your control joystick here, and the control joystick is going to have a, a number of buttons and switches on it. Uh, specifically on the control joystick, we've got a forward and neutral reverse switch. This is the three-position switch. Over here, we have our proportional control for an attachment like a grapple or something like that, a grapple rake or what have you. Uh, this below is our kick down button. The kick down button, uh, this machine starts up in second gear and if we need to drop it to first, we can hit that button and it'll drop to first. If we're running in automatic heavy mode, it starts up in first gear. But in the other uh, transmission modes, it's gonna start up in second gear so we can use our kick down to drop to first when we need that additional torque going into a pile. Up above, we have our activate switch for the forward neutral reverse three position switch on the joystick. And in order for us to activate that, we're going to go through a series of steps. We have to make sure that our gear shift lever uh, is in neutral. We need to make sure that this is in neutral. We have to release our park brake, and then we press this button to activate the forward neutral reverse on the joystick. And then the other button here is your horn. And, uh, and so that's basically the joystick on the right-hand side. To the right of that, you have a little yellow button that says ton on it, and that yellow button is for uh, clearing out the uh, accumulated tonnage on the weigh system. So as we are weighing uh, material and loading into a truck, we can hold and press this, and it will clear that total when we're ready for the next truck to come. And we'll show you how that works. To the right, we have our key switch, we have uh, a series of rocker switches. The first one is our hydraulic disconnect switch, and basically this will lock out the hydraulic flow going to the wheel loader boom and bucket circuit. Uh, the steering is still active, so when you lock this out, it's a safety feature, but your steering is still active. This is our parking switch. Uh, right next to that is our automatic diff lock switch. This is a three position switch, so in this position it's off. This is your automatic position, so when it feels wheel slip, it will automatically engage the front lockup differential. And then here is the manual or momentary switch. If you press this down, then it locks it up while it's being pressed down. And then when you release it, it releases it. So automatic, off, and manual. And then the next one that you'll see, there's a couple of blank spots. Uh, the next one you'll see is the SCR cleaning switch. Uh, this is a stage uh, five, uh, tier four final uh, machine, uh, engine and after treatment system. And uh, basically, as long as you're running at high exhaust temperatures, you should never have to fool with this. Uh, it's very uncommon. But if you do sit and idle excessively, then you may have to uh, put this through a manual regen, which it, the machine will do it itself. You just have to pull this lock, push this down, and then it goes through a cycle. Um, that can take up to 45 minutes. Now we're gonna talk about the upper part of the cab where you'll find the Bluetooth radio and you're also going to find the air conditioning controls. Uh, this is uh, equipped with a Bluetooth radio with MP3 capabilities and calling capabilities. So you have the ability to connect it to your phone. You can make phone calls with your phone stored away and uh, you can also pair it and listen to streaming music over, over the radio in the system. So it's very nice. In order to pair your phone, you'll hold in the call button and you'll see pairing pop up on the screen after a couple seconds. And then you'll go to your phone, and you'll go to your uh, Bluetooth settings, and you'll select Hyundai. And then once it's connected, it's going to ask you for a four-digit code, and that code is 1234. You type that in, and it will connect. Once it's connected and paired, you will go to the Mode button, and you can select BT Audio or BT Music. And then when that pops up, uh, if you've got streaming music on your phone, it'll stream, and you can hear it over the the radio. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can answer phone calls. So in order to answer a phone call, when a call comes in, you'll just hit the call button. That'll pick the phone up and you can talk over the intercom. And then when you're finished with your phone, you can hit the hang up button. 
To the right of this, we have the auto climate control system. Uh, you can set the fan speed or you can put it in auto mode and set the temperature and it will automatically adjust the temperature to get to the temperature that you've got set, uh, heat and air. So I've got Mark in the cab with me to help me out with the cameras. Uh, we're going to look at the front of the cab and talk a little bit about the steering wheel, uh, the gear shift lever, and the other uh, switch lever that we have on the right hand side as well as how to adjust the steering column. So if you're looking at the steering wheel, on the bottom right you've got a lever here to tilt and telescope the steering wheel. If we push down, we can tilt it easily. And then if you put it in a straight line, you can pull up and you can telescope and push, push up and down to get it to a height that's preferred. Okay. Then uh, on the right hand side, we've got our switch lever for our lights, our brights, our windshield wiper speed and windshield wiper fluid. We also have our horn, another horn button. And again, if you remember, we were looking at the control joystick we have the same, another button to activate the horn off the joystick. Uh, on the left hand side, we have our gear shift selector. This is where we would select the speeds for the automatic transmission or manual transmission. Um, with the automatic transmission, the higher speed you select, it's only going to shift up to that speed. So you would want to select the speed that you want it to max out at, and then it'll automatically shift between those gears. Okay? And then if you press it forward, that's forward. If you pull it back, that's back and in this position it would be in neutral. Okay? You have your hazard light switch here and then you have a nice little steering knob to steer the machine. On the floor we have a single brake pedal. This also acts as our clutch cutoff pedal. The clutch cutoff pedal basically deactivates the power from the engine to the transmission when we press it and it allows all that power to go to the pumps so that we can accelerate through the lift cycle on the boom. So as we're pressing the the brake we're deactivating the transmission and we're increasing the pump flow and we're able to cycle faster. Uh, on the right hand side we have our accelerator okay and very simple. Here in the front we have our front dash which is going to have your speedometer, uh, it's going to have your um, you know several different temperature readings and it'll also have hazard lights that will pop up as needed. Over here to the right we have a nice large cup holder. Uh, you put a big gulp uh, size cup in that Cup holder. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the seat and how to adjust the seat properly so that you're comfortable throughout the day. Uh, these are really nice seats. You have the ability to adjust the control console up and down. You can move it forward and back, up and down. There's a little latch lever right here on the right hand side to do so. On the left hand side we have an adjustable armrest and we can increase or decrease the angle of that armrest so that it's comfortable for our forearm. This is an air ride seat. To increase the air, you're going to pull up on it. To decrease the air, you're going to push down. And typically what you want to do, there is a meter there, is you want your, based on your weight, you want the meter to be in the green area. So you're going to adjust that amount of air to your preference or to where the, the green is shown in that little meter. The other adjustment you have is to move the seat forward and backward. And if you'll notice, the joystick will slide with the seat. Uh, you also have a service slide, which is right behind the seat, and that will allow you to gain additional access to behind the seat, and you can pull that. On the right-hand side, we have a suspension adjustment, and what this does is it, it changes the amount of uh, bounce, I guess you could say, in the seat. So when we have it to the far right, we have very little bounce, it's more stiff. When we move it to the far left, it's much more bouncy. We have a little bit more flexibility in the seat. So it really just depends on personal operator preference. On the left hand side, we have the horizontal suspension lock. So right now, if I move forward and back, it's not going to move. If I unlock that, now I have mo movement forward and back, which can be nice if you're a bigger operator or if you're driving long distances with the wheel loader on bumpy ground, you may want the forward and back movement. So that's up to the operator. The other thing we have is the ability to incline the seat cushion. So we can change the angle more downward or more at a, at a reclined position. We also have the ability to change the position of the seat cushion forward and backwards. So you can move it just a little bit forward and backwards depending on your size. You have the recline to recline your back seat, the backrest that can go all the way back or forward. And then you also have the heated seat switch, which is on the left-hand side, 
uh, that you can select to turn on and off if it's cold. So before we go into the monitor, I want to show you how to activate the forward neutral reverse function on this machine. So if you look at the machine, the first thing you want to look at is your control joystick right here. This is your activate button right here. Okay. In order for us to activate the forward neutral control switch on your joystick, we're going to need to make sure that your shift lever is in the neutral position. You need to make sure that this is in the neutral position. Okay. We need to make sure that our parking brake is off, deactivated, as so. And then now we can press this button, and when we do so, we will see a light come up on the dash. See the green light? Let me get a little closer where you'll see it. That green light. So <clears throat> now when we raise the bucket and we want to go forward by pressing this forward position button, now we can go forward and you can see that the machine will start to advance. Same thing goes for the reverse. And then neutral, it's it stopped, okay? We can do the same thing with the gear shift lever, of course. Um, and anytime we were to use the gear shift lever, it will override the forward neutral reverse on the joystick. So if you'll notice, the forward neutral reverse indicator is no longer illuminated. So in order for us to reactivate that, we simply just need to press this button and it illuminates again. Okay, so that's how you activate the forward neutral reverse switch on the joystick. Very useful and convenient feature. Now I want to talk about how to engage the float mode. So with these wheel loaders, they do come with a float feature, which will allow you to back drag and get a nice even level uh, surface on the ground. And basically what happens is your boom cylinders are allowed to float so your bucket can follow the contour of the ground. To enable this, what we will need to do is place the bucket on the ground first, as so. And once on the ground, we want to put constant downward pressure and we will put the joystick into the return to dig position, which is the detent at the bottom of the stroke of the, of the pushing forward on the joystick. And as we keep it in that position, we're going to see a light illuminate on our monitor that has squiggly lines underneath it. And that indicates that we're in the float mode. Now, once in this position, we maintain this. Now we can back up using our forward neutral reverse or a shift lever. And you can see we can pull a nice even grade and the bucket is allowed to float and we can grade a nice level surface. So that is the float feature. Looking at the monitor from left to right, we'll start with the buttons on the bottom and we're going to point out some of the most important buttons, features and functions. So here we have the menu button. Uh, we press this, it takes us into the different menus to set up the machine and select different preferences as well as accessing uh, fault codes and service information and things like that. This is your escape button, which will take you back a screen, okay? Next, we have some arrows. These can be used to select within different menus and also for some special functions. Uh, this next button is kind of an enter button uh, that we use to uh, select uh, certain functions. Once we've selected uh, what we want to select, we can hit that to enter. This button here activates the rear view camera, you can see. Then we come down to button number one, and these, this is our, our lights, and then we have our work lights. If we had auto lube on the machine, we would press number three to access the different auto lube features. We have the quick coupler connect and disconnect button. Then we have ride control. This is our weighing system button. This takes us into an additional menu of selection for the weighing system. We have the hazard beacon. We have our uh, rear windshield wiper and fluid button. We have the heated mirror switch button. This is our return to dig and return to carry detent button. Then we have our fine modulation mode button. This is to select uh, like a fine inching or fine modulation mode. Now I want to talk about the screen. Uh, first we'll reference the automatic transmission settings. So if you select on the screen, you'll see 
four different settings. You can set manual, which means your automatic transmission is turned off, and you'll use the gear shift selector to shift forward and reverse and, and adjust your speeds. Or you can turn your automatic transmission on. I usually recommend automatic N, which is, stands for automatic normal. Uh, you can also select automatic light or automatic heavy. This machine will start up in second gear unless you're running an automatic heavy. So if you're going to be doing V-loading, truck loading, short distance travel, AH mode, automatic heavy is probably the best to be in. If you're going to be doing general uh, work with the wheel loader, AN makes sense. If you're going to be doing long distance load and carry travel, then I would suggest to set it in the AL mode. Uh, in the AN and AL mode, you can kick down from the second gear to the first gear just simply by hitting the kick down button here on the bottom of the joystick. Above that, we have the CCO mode, which stands for clutch cutoff, and clutch cutoff will basically declutch the power from the engine to the transmission, so all that power can be applied to the pumps when you are loading a truck and needing to cycle up. And so as you start to depress the service brake, it is declutching the power to the transmission, then you start to accelerate and you raise the boom, and you're gonna have faster cycle speeds. Um, based on how much brake pressure that you place on the pedal, that, that is what you will set according to the mode that you select. So we can go into the CCO mode, and if we want about medium brake pressure, we'll select that. If we're going to be uh, going up a run flat level surface, maybe we select the light mode so we barely have to tap the pedal in order to declutch the power to the transmission. And then conversely, if we're ramp loading into a hopper, then we may want to have heavy brake pressure before we declutch the power to the transmission and then accelerate up through the cycle. So in that situation, you may want to select the H mode for CCO. Typically, though, I recommend we set it in the middle in the M mode and uh, leave it there. The other thing we want to talk about are the power settings. Uh, you have economy, power, and power smart. Hyundai's done some really unique engineering behind the power smart to try to give you optimal power and good fuel savings at the same time. If you want maximum machine power though and fuel is not as big of a concern for you, then you'll want to run it in the direct power mode. And if you want maximum fuel savings, you can run it in the economy mode. I usually select the standard power mode to give the machine the maximum performance it can have. If you select in this quadrant here, you can select the information that you would like to have displayed on the screen. If you're going to be using the onboard standard weighing system that Hyundai provides with the wheel loaders, then you'll want to select the weighing system, and then that information will be displayed in that screen, in that quadrant. And then, and as you can see on the top, what this is telling us, this screen tells us what we did yesterday in total tons and what we have today that we're doing. Now we can easily toggle by hitting this load button on the screen, and we can now have per truck. So this tells us what we have in the truck and what we have in the bucket. And so as we raise the boom past horizontal, once we get it up there, it will actually indicate the weight in the bucket. Um, then after we dump, and we must dump in order for it to add to the total, and we return the boom back down, I think below a percentage below horizontal, it is going to automatically add that weight to the total. And so basically per truck, we will continue to load the truck until we get it to the approximate weight that we want in the truck based on the weight that's indicated on the screen. And then when we're ready for the next truck, we will hold the ton button that's down to the bottom right below the joystick lever, and we'll hold it until it clears, and then we're ready for the next truck to come through. There's actually uh, the ability to toggle between truck A, truck B, and truck C in this mode. Or you can see your total tons of production per day and the total tons that you produced yesterday. There's some additional ways to use the waste system, and we will cover that in a separate video. Uh, but you do have the ability to track your production by operator. Uh, you can track different material types. And you have the ability, if you plan to stockpile throughout the day, and then go load trucks and then stockpile some more, and you want an accurate daily production, and you don't want the stockpiling to add to your daily total, which it will, <clears throat> you have the ability to go into a special menu and turn that off while you're stockpiling and then turn it back on when you're ready to start adding to your total. So that's a separate video. We will discuss that, or you can reach out to your uh, NED, uh, nearest NED location and talk to one of our salespeople who can help you with that.
So as we look in the menu, a few of the things that are important to note, uh, the first mode menu would be the one that the operator would be most, most interested in. As we're looking here, we have three different tabs. Uh, a lot of this stuff can be selected through the buttons that we just talked about. Uh, on the hydraulic tab, you'll see workload, our detents, uh, bucket priority, which would give flow priority to the bucket circuit over the boom. There's not a lot of scenarios where you'd want to use that. I usually recommend to leave it off. If you have an attachment like a grapple rake or something and you want to adjust the flow level on that, you can do that through this menu. Your soft end stops, these machines are designed for novice to expert operators and uh, the soft end stop basically slows the stroke of the cylinder for the boom and the bucket at the end of the cycle. So it, it can help it to be a little bit more cushioned, I guess you could say. Um, we usually recommend keeping most of those off uh, with the exception of possibly boom up or boom down. Um, really, it can slow down the cycle a little bit, but it can also add to the comfort level for the operator. So it is definitely a nice feature, and that's uh, based on operator preference. Then next we have the ETC setting. And there are several different options in there that we can select from. The one main thing I'd like to bring to your attention is to make sure that you have your automatic cooling fan selected. We usually recommend that when you select that, you set it to a minimal interval of every 30 minutes uh, for a minimal amount of time for about 30 seconds. That way when it is running and it's hot outside, uh, you don't get hot in the cab for very long um, because when it is reversing, it's not cooling. So, but it is important to run that frequently and for short periods of time. The other thing we recommend is the engine auto shutdown. We try to set that at about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes on average. These machines are great machines. Um, but they do require that you run them at high exhaust temperatures and you really don't want these to sit in idle for longer than 10, 15 minutes at a time. So with the engine auto shutdown, if it sits idle without touching the controls or the accelerator, then the machine will automatically shut itself off. Some other important menus that you'll find are the monitoring menu, which is gonna give you basic machine monitoring, operation history, fault history for fault codes, fuel red information, and general machine information. So your basic machine monitoring is going to give you your hydraulic transmission, coolant temperatures, your battery voltage, things like that. Your um, machine information is going to give you information as it relates to some of the onboard controllers, like your transmission control unit, your engine control unit, your machine control unit, and so on and so forth. This will give you the version of software that's on it, and information that might be required by the dealership in order for us to service the unit. But from an operator standpoint, none of this stuff is heavily important in terms of operating the machine. There's also a series of submenus within the management menu that most, for the most part, owner operators or the dealer will be involved in, in terms of uh, some of that information. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us as we talked about the machine operation of the Hyundai A-Series wheel loaders. If you have any questions, please reach out to one of our representatives. You can contact us through our website at nedealers.com.